Man, I can't believe I got a 19 pound bike. Everyone in my YouTube comment section was making fun of me. How could I possibly make this thing lighter? And how can I possibly win over everyone in my comment section? I'm so tired of you made fun of all my life. If there only there's a way that I could just stumble upon or just a whole parts list of what I could put on my bike. Oh! Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. So, today what we are going to be doing is I got my bike, as we just saw, in the scale. 8.79 kilos, stock as is. Pedals, cage, Garmin mount, uh, Garmin sensors, wheel sensor, and cadence sensor. I'm going to be making this thing a little bit lighter with some parts I have. Uh, first thing's wheels. Crank and cassette I'm gonna save for later because I want to kind of do this as organic as possible as like a normal consumer would. Like they buy this bike and the first upgrade they do is wheels. So I reached out to a couple of my friends and, and, and sponsors of the channel and I was able to come up with some things, also with some things that I put in there myself. But as we can see here, we have a pair of Windspace or Loon wheels, eh, black edition, the best edition, which I'll get into in a second, we'll unbox those things. They are deep dish wheels, but we will talk about them. Also, I have here new tires. I have your S-Works Turbo Pros, 700 by 24C. I know what you guys are gonna say. Great, you should be riding, you should be riding a cruiser tire. You should be riding a 730 with, with, with 60 PSI and, and, uh, and Victoria inserts and fluid. I prefer 24s at a maximum pressure. That's why I like to ride, I like a firm. We're swapping out rotors as well because I have them here. SRAM Red, so I'm going from SRAM Rival to SRAM Red. Same size, not changing the sizes out, should be pretty easy. Nova to ride OSPW, I love OSPWs. I was thinking about ceramic speed, but Nova to ride has been a partnership with uh, this channel for a really long time. I like their product, I'm gonna be running their SRAM Rival OSPW they have on here in the black, so I want to put that on there. This will add a little bit of weight, but I like the performance bonus I get. Let me give this a shot. I'm changing the saddle out for no reason at all because I absolutely love my saddle. I have the power comp on there. I'm going to an S-Rex power mirror just for the just for the fun of it. Uh, carbon, make, actually to make it lighter, but we also need to swap out the seat post from alloy to carbon rails. I'm excited for that to get some rides in. Going with the 155 because I got a little bit of an extra wide booty and I want that support. But I'm excited to see what the weight difference is and the feel and stuff like that. I have no complaints with my stock saddle at all. The first ride I did was very painful, but that's just because I was out of shape and not used to it. Five rides into it, absolutely loving it. And then, I wanna talk about these guys right here. Ceramic Speed. I reached out to Ceramic Speed. I said, hey, I'm doing a, a series where I'm gonna upgrade my bike. I have some more videos planned for this. Where I'm gonna do different power meeting settings and stuff like that, which we'll get into in a little bit. But, reach out to them. They were so gracious enough to say, hey, we checked out your channel, we love you guys. I also know the Ceramic Speed rep over here. They hooked me up with a free ceramic speed red bottom bracket for my dub crank. Super stoked about that. Never in my life will I ever think that ceramic speed, that company will hook me up. So they were gracious to do that. So big shout out. I love ceramic um, bearings in general, as you guys can tell by my OSPWs. I've had the OSPW. I had ceramic speed bottom brackets back in the day on the Venge Vias and the SL6s. I like their stuff a lot. Their coating is really good. That's gonna do it there. So after I got that, then, I don't know if you guys probably seen the, the Instagram page, Team Turtle, which is huge on, on all specialized products. They put out some of the most fires content on there. Uh, I got really good friends with the, uh, the owner over there, I believe, Nick, uh, Nicholas. Um, very generous people. We go back and forth showing each other content of their bikes. I love their stuff they put out there. They have over there, we got to talking, they have an oil slick ceramic speed bottom bracket, as we can see right here. BSA SRAM Dub Alternative Oil Slick Coated. So this is a Coda BB. He went ahead and he, he helped me get this thing over here. He said it's exclusive to Singapore area. He said I'm the first one in the United States to have this thing. So I have to run that. I know Serang, so he sent this out to me. I'll work with him. I'm still running the same exact thing. Maybe this will be in a giveaway later on down the road. But look how cool this thing is, man. And this is gonna tie in with some I build later. But so Serang speed BB. I'm gonna do some spin tests for you guys too so you guys can see the difference. But. These are my upgrades list as of right now. Later on down the road, we'll do handlebars, crank, cassette, but we'll get there later. I'm excited to see how much weight we're gonna take off with this. So, as a further ado, this is my unboxing of the things. I'll take off the wheels. I'm gonna swap each one and kind of weigh out tires for tires. I'm gonna do a whole weight thing here so that way you guys can see it. So, check down below and we'll go from there. 
So these are the black edition and they're 65 millimeters. There is nothing different except for just a black coating. I believe they're a little bit heavier as well, but I wanted it to look. Also I have decals here, which they come with. Well, actually, I don't know if they come with these or not. If I ask them for white decals or black decals, I might put those on later on down the road, but I'm super excited about these. Front wheel. Here. This thing feels so much lighter. Open this thing up. Oh, look how clean that thing is, dude. Black edition Loon, tubeless valves, carbon spokes, same hub, same ceramic bearings. Just, I love the clean look of it. No different to rim depth, no different to rim width. Just black edition, badass. I think the black edition is a little bit heavier than their butterfly weave to make this texture on there, but I absolutely love it. it looks mean. Let me put the tire and tube on, we'll get going. That's what the wheel looks like. You know, it's deep, son. Okay. Front wheel was 1358, I believe, or somewhere around there. You guys can double check. 1230. So 100 and some grams. And keep in mind, these are 65 millimeter depth wheels. I need it for Florida. I'm telling you, when I get behind someone, it just makes it that much easier to maintain top end speed. But boom, let's go rear. So yeah, like I was just saying, the reason why I choose such a deep dish wheel for South Florida, one, we literally have no hills at all. Two, when I get behind someone, or even if I'm riding by myself and I'm riding on a top end speed, it's much more easier to maintain top end speed with a deeper dish wheel. So I'm not working as hard. So if you ever roll your bike and you always feel like you're pedaling super fast, like really hard against it when you're at your top end speed to hold your bike up, uh, maybe you might want to consider a deeper dish wheel. Uh, that's just my preference. But when I'm at that top end speed and I get to behind someone or at that speed that's comfortable for me, it feels like I'm gliding with the bike and not working against it. Night and day difference, honestly. So that's why I chose the 65s over the 50s. And also it just looks aggressive as hell. So big fan. Bond racket. I'm gonna give you guys a little spin test beforehand. What a stock strammed up bond racket is. To be honest with you, a stock strammed up bond racket is actually really nice. I think I have six rides on here. I think like 200 miles, maybe 150. I don't know exactly what it would be. But here comes the stock test, right? That ain't bad. But Ceramic speed. Eight millimeter, tool, up, and again. All right, so for our SRAM dub bottom bracket, you always loosen towards the bike. So I got my little breaker bar. Bottom bracket stock from Specialized, kind of dry. I'm gonna re glue that thing up, but first, weights. All right, so coming up, we have a regular SRAM Dub BSA bottom bracket, weighing in at 73 grams. Okay, and I took off the spacer too, so it's even. And then, ceramic speed bottom bracket, coated, weighing at 85 grams. I'm taking the coat all day. Look how beautiful that thing is, bro. So now I have bow! Ceramic speed grease that they apply with it. I'm gonna put a good amount on here. I usually just do green grease, but I just figured I'd be fancy with it. Let me do it for the, for the YouTube vlog. Other side, bottom bracket right side in first. Tighten it toward the back of the bike. The only thing you have to worry about when sewing these with the E-tap, is there is that one rear brake hose that you wanna make sure is out of the way. So I always push it above this spindle cover. Take the spindle, clean up any dirt, grit, or ground that was on there previously. And we're gonna be using the same 
freeze that ceramic speed has applied for us before. Just a little, just a little tube of grease. Again, we're going to apply it a good amount. Because we want to make sure this thing rolls. You know, I never rode a coated bottom bracket before. I've only rode the, the basic. I'm going to apply it with my hands, like so. You guys might say that's a lot of grease. Again, I live in South Florida. I will take a little bit of slowness at first to make sure that I don't have any kind of um, corrosion. I like grease, grease my friend here. Pause. It's not tight, but oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay, so now we're all tightened up. Here comes the spin test now. That is nice, dude. That is smooth, man. So excited about that thing. Come here, boy! That's badass. Okay, chain on, boom, bada bing, bop, bop. Next task at hand we're gonna do is the OSPW for the SRAM Rival. So I need a new chain, so I'm gonna go from a Rival chain to a SRAM Red chain, which is all the way. <sighs> Damn it. Ah! Oh! God! Okay. Mission accomplished. Oh, shit! Sorry. Back. Oh, you shall not pass. All right, Shane. All right, now my favorite part: installing the OSPW for SRAM Rival. I've done so many of these now, I hate them. But first things first, I'm going to shift it wide open. Bust it wide open. Okay, OSPW is installed. Sorry about that, my battery is running low, but it is the Nova to ride. OSPW in all black. We put a SRAM red chain on there. Let's give you guys a little OSPW with a new SRAM speed bottom bracket test. The motor on that bike. Hey, hey, hey. We're flying, son. Onto the seat. Let's go that way. All right, for my seat, before I do anything, I wanna make sure I take my measurement because I like where my saddle's at. This only applies to what I'm doing right now if it's a similar seat. Like, I'm gonna replace with a power mirror, which is the exact same kind of identity to this. So I'm gonna go tip of the saddle to a point on the stem that I'm comfortable with remembering. Um, if you were using a different saddle with a different nose, like let's say you went to a Roman Evo with a longer nose, I usually go to the widest part of the saddle and measure from there because that's where your sit bones will be at. But you just wanna make sure you pick a point that you remember. So right here, tip of the saddle, and I go right to where the stem is. 57.6 centimeters. So let me go swap out the seat. And so now I swapped out my cups to fit a carbon rail on here. Before it was an alloy rail, so you wanna make sure there's a carbon because we're putting on a carbon fiber rail because the carbon rails are ovalized. Boom, tighten them up just a little bit. Now I'll grab my saddle. Some of that to my starting point. We'll tighten her down and we'll get to measuring. You could also measure, obviously, if you're doing like a real fit, like uh, this is just my bike, so I don't really mind because I can adjust this stuff. Up and down, four and a half. There's an app on your phone on the iPhones that like level that you can actually level this thing to measure where you want to be at. Um, but yes, I kind of have an idea exactly where I want to be at. Try it out 57.6 right there. Boom! Bada beep, bop, boop. You can't get any better than that, guys. I'm the best, you're the worst. Make sure it looks where I want to be at. That seems good right there. I can only adjust it on the ride because I do not complain about stuff. Pop! Damn, that bike looks good, man. Holy cow. All right, so finished product in the stand. 
same everything, same Garmin adapter, pedals, cage, Garmin mount. We changed out the wheels to the Loon 65 millimeter wheels. We put on an OSPW. We put on ceramic seat bottom bracket and we did a carbon fiber seat post and different rotors. We dropped a whopping, pretty sure like half a pound. <laughs> um, 8.44 kilos. It was like 19 pounds, six ounces. That was 18 pounds, 10 ounces. Keep in mind, I went to a much deeper dish wheel. I put in heavier tubes. And the main weight of this bike is probably the crank and the cassette. But I know 1000% I'm gonna be faster because of those wheels. So weight to me is not a big deal. This bike does not look like it's made for climbing. This bike does not look like it's, it cares about its weight. This bike is a heavy, heavy, fatty, fatty, but it's a fast fatty. Once it gets up to speed, you know, slowing down. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Stay tuned with me along this build. I'm gonna be doing some more upgrades to this bike, um, like the crank, like the, the cassette as well. Um, and also I wanna do a carbon bar. So if anyone knows of anyone that can shout me out a carbon bar, let me know. I'm down to try it. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. And thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.